So what's the biggest small watch you've ever seen? This might actually be the watch, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Welcome back to Jazz Time. Jazztime.com is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so you can easily choose the best watch for yourself in the comfort of your own home. We offer the lowest prices anywhere online, and if you'd like to know the price, simply click on the links in the description below. We greatly appreciate if you purchase your next watch from us at jazztime.com. Today, we'll be looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the Jumbo, extra thin, entirely in 18 karat pink gold, glare-proof sapphire crystals on the front and back with a blue petite tapisserie pattern, reference number 15202OR.00.1240OR.01. Now, I'll be doing an unboxing here, and I'll also have to compare it with a current, now I, I say current as in a modern iteration of the Royal Oak. This is also current as well, but this one actually maintains the original sort of form and overall function of the original, the most original Royal Oak from the 70s that actually uh, was created to save the mechanical watch industry from the quartz crisis. And this one currently actually retails at just over double that of the steel version, as well as the modern updated steel counterpart, the 15500ST. So, as in traditional AP fashion, we have the warranty underneath its own booklet, underneath the box here. All right, wrapped up nicely in styrofoam. All right, and here is the watch itself, all right, in pink gold. Now, I can actually remove it from the pillow. Set it off to the side here. Actually, I'll, I'll put it over here. All right, so here we go. The AP Jumbo Royal Oak in pink gold blue petite tapisserie dial and i have barely any nails here but this is part of the unboxing experience this one has a green sticker to very much accentuate that pink gold overall look now there's a bunch of residue on this one so i'll have to remove that separately in a different video or perhaps after the video all right so yeah bunch of residue we'll have to remove that physically okay but anyway here's the watch itself all right we'll be going over the case the bezel dial crown functions movement and the bracelet and i'll be giving you my thoughts on all of these as we go throughout the video all right so this case measures 39 millimeters in diameter from finger to thumb it's 8.1 millimeters thick and is 48.5 millimeters lug to lug with a maximum span of 51.5 millimeters if you count the bracelet all right and in every way, it actually measures less than that of the modern counterpart, the 15500ST, which is 42 millimeters in diameter, 10.4 millimeters thick, with a 52 millimeter overall span, all right? So, not really jumbo at all. It's pink gold in entirely in its construction, a satin brush finishing along the sides, high polish along these tiny flanks here, these tiny vertices along the very first bevel, a high polish along the edge of that rear case back with a satin brush finish back on there. All right, same with the crown side, satin brush finishing along the sides with the high polish along the flank, the vertice there. All right, vertex rather. All right, now looking at the sapphire crystal it's glare proofed on the front as well as the back so you can fully appreciate the movement as well as dial equally all this working together gives you a total water resistance of 50 meters all right so i would personally consider this to be you know no more than surface swimble certainly wash your hands with this but i wouldn't take it you know past the deep end of the pool don't go further than that all right now, looking at the bezel, again, pink gold in construction, satin brush finishing along the front with a high polish along the bevel for the separation of you know, how you see the different levels of the watch when you're glancing at it face on. There are eight hexagonal screws along the front, also white gold with a high polish along the bevel, all right, working together to really make them shine very nicely, all right. 
we also have the slots of those screws facing concentrically, sort of using that gestalt law of closure so that your mind fills in the space among these screws as being one continuous circle. And it also helps that, you know, they're held within the entire circle of the bezel rounded octagonal on the outside, perfectly circular on the inside. Speaking of the inside, we can look at the dial. And also if you've noticed, there's no seconds hand on this dial. It also has the petite tapisserie pattern, smaller than that of what you would see on the grand tapisserie, you know, so commonly seen on the modern royal oak. You know, so seeing them side by side, you can actually see the you know, difference there, All right? And then, you know, I do have this other Royal Oak over here and we'll be doing a full on comparison of these two, but this is mainly about the jumbo and, you know, subscribe to see that video when it comes out, hit the bell notification so you know exactly when, All right? So anyway, back onto this uh, dial here, Petite tapisserie pattern, smaller than that of the Grand Tapisserie, All right? And you can actually get an even finer experience when, you know, when it comes to being able to actually see that guilloche patterning on the dial, which ultimately gives it that, you know, sun ray and sunburst look. It's a very, very fine texture on there that makes that sun ray patterning much more fine and more refined actually, All right? And also keep in mind that this is the blue version of the dial. It's a boutique exclusive, generally more desirable and more difficult to make just right. And therefore there are fewer, fewer units made and available. All right, so keep that in mind. And something you'll notice immediately on the dial, if you're, if you're accustomed to the modern Royal Oak designs, is that separation of the Audemars Piguet logo. The letter form is placed at the six o'clock while the word mark is kept at the 12 o'clock. And I presume it's for spacing reasons that I'll mention in a moment, but I like to hear your interpretation of this matter. I actually quite like the placement myself as it really accentuates that 18 karat gold letter form portion, you know, really helping it to stand out greatly against that cool blue of that dial, all right? Also note, the minute track is in line with the outer edges of the index hour marks. They're white, painted on lines, only to be interrupted by these large pink gold applied index hour markers with luminescent coating. Again, we have the Gestalt Law of Closure to make yet another circle, but this time, directly on the dial and, you know, rightfully so. The minute hand actually gently brushes up against the inside of this minute track, lending to, you know, the thoughtfulness and purposefulness of every aspect of this original Royal Oak design. The date window at the three o'clock isn't, you know, actually anything new and, you know, rightfully so. It was part of the original design. The background is also a shade of blue that matches the darkest portions of the dial, helping it to really fit in and allow that white Arabic date text to really shine forth very easily. Speaking of shining forth, we can actually turn off the lights and see the luminescence at work here. All right, it's a very bright green luminescence on there and very, very thin index lines, double marks for the 12 o'clock and you can see the properly loomed minute and hour hands as well. Very easy to read in the dark. All right, so looking at the dial overall, the dial, is the dial actually larger when compared to the modern Royal Oak? And you know, I, I can't say this. Well, I can't say that it is because you know, actually the short answer here is no. So we're still stuck wondering what makes this jumbo because in every aspect, this jumbo is actually smaller than the modern Royal Oak in my right hand, the steel version, all right? So what makes this jumbo? Well, we'll have to figure that out through this video, all right? So now looking at the functions of the crown, it's a pull-out crown largely due to the legacy and, you know, therefore the outsourced movement that was originally built but never actually used by Juge Le Coult, who supplied movements to other watch brands such as, you know, Patek Philippe and Vachon Constantin, even for their 222, you know. And so when we're looking at the overall function here, it's just a pull-out crown. At the default position, you can wind the watch, no problem there, but, you know, pull out the crown to the only other position and you can move the minute hand. Well, then how do you adjust the date? Well, it has the older mechanism of moving the minute hand such that the hour hand approaches midnight. And once it does, that's when you can basically move the date forward. Now you don't have to move it forward 24 hours each time. You'll have to move it back to about 1030 and then back to midnight to advance the date once again. So keep in mind, this is not a quick set date. This is a rather 
well, a bit closer to quick set, but not all that quick. And also keep in mind that the throw on this crown is actually pretty large because you'll have to do a lot of movements if you're going to want to, you know, actually move that date forward to any sort of, you know, meaningful position on your calendar. All right. So plenty of movement there. It's a lot to play with, you know, certainly. So that could be a plus for you. All right. And all you need to do is just simply press it back in to maintain that water resistance. Now, something about the modern Royal Oak is that it has the screw down crown, which I think actually does give it a bit more water resistance. They still rated for the same 50 meters, but I think you, you have better peace of mind with the screw down crown. This one is just a pull crown. So, you know, I trust Audemars Piguet to keep this, you know, water resistant as, you know, they do test their watches, but just keep that in mind. For that peace of mind, you'll probably want to go with the screw down crown, but this one does not come with it. All right, so what makes all of this work? It's the movement, the self-winding manufacturer caliber 2121. Again, built from a movement originally known as the JLC 920, but you know, AP have actually purchased and secured the rights to this movement. So it's now technically an in-house made movement. It has a diameter of 28.4 millimeters or 12 and a half lines, a thickness of 2.4 millimeters, a frequency, is at a very, very, very slow 19,800 vibrations per hour or 2.75 Hertz. The current Audemars Piguet Royal Oaks actually do be at no less than three Hertz. This one is at 2.75 Hertz. It has the free sprung gyro max balance for excellent regulation, meaning that it's essentially bump resistant. It has 26 joules altogether with the bi-directional automatic winding with a support and weight segment oscillating weight in 21 karat gold. Four of those jewels are actually used specifically to support the ring under the rotor, if you can see it, to actually prevent unnecessary collision and friction against the base plate or any other components of this movement. So you have the longevity, you know, working for you here, something that you don't find in other Royal Oak models, only in the jumbo. All right. So altogether, this gives you a 40 hour power reserve, not all that impressive but for its time period certainly it was all right and also while we're looking down here at the case back you'll also note that this is the yellow or the pink gold version rather so you have these hallmarks on the sides of the case to show you that you are indeed working with precious materials precious metals specifically pink gold all right so taking a look at the bracelet again all 18 karat pink gold now is this a point where it can be considered jumbo? Well, not really. The taper of the bracelet is actually greater than that of the modern Royal Oak when comparing side by side. The clasp portion is actually smaller on that of the jumbo than of the current uh, Royal Oak. So, you know, this is still the smaller watch. And, you know, the opening is basically the same. Double deployment clasp, symmetrical in construction. So it's very easy to wear when you have, you know, a, a more tight fit or a smaller wrist. All right, so when it comes to the wearing experience, I can try it on now so you can see how it wears on the wrist. A seven inch wrist is what I measured, so I will have to take out a few links here. Let me zoom out so you can see it fully. Again, man, I'm so sorry about this uh, residue here. I'll have to remove that physically myself later, but all right, so here we go. On the wrist, very large on the wrist, certainly jumbo in that aspect. But again, remember the modern Royal Oak has a bigger span. So this is not exactly all that jumbo in comparison to the modern Royal Oak, which is less than half the price. So maybe the price is what makes it jumbo, but you know, actually when we're talking about the wearing experience here, I, I need to point out that the lugs actually do not go down all that much. And that happens to actually accentuate that flaring out of that bracelet even though the bracelet doesn't go straight down this is as tight as it gets on my wrist all right so those extra channel uh spacing there under the lugs does give it a little bit more breathability at least for me on a larger wrist probably not as much but you do have the spacing among all of these links, which are again, high polish along the edges, these vertices with a set and brush finishing along the top. All right, going all the way down to that very nice, nicely and uh, elegant, I would say, 
AP folding clasp. You can't really see, you know, that there's much separation there except for the logo itself, all right? So when it comes to the overall wearing experience, the weight is much more in the case, even though this is an eight millimeter thick watch, it's super thin, it will fit under any suit cuff, no, you know, bar none. There's no suit cuff that will run into this and stop. It will all slide over very easily, very comfortably as well. I get more weight in the case itself, not so much in the bracelet, so, you know, it's not like you're swinging something around super heavy on the wrist, but is slightly noticeable, all right? And keep in mind that, you know, this wrist presence is certainly what you get. The Jumbo, you get the wrist presence, although you get more so on the Modern Royal Oak. Thicker in design, larger in span, just overall bigger look. But the Jumbo, you know, what makes this the Jumbo? Well. Maybe the size of the winding crown compared to that of literally any other watch in its class, but you know, that's such a small aspect. You know, but I did leave in one little clue in this video as to why it's probably called the Jumbo. And it was that it was the first Royal Oak ever to be created. And at the time it was considered to be, you know, way too pricey and just gaudy for its overall looks, but collectors slowly changed their minds and considered it to be, you know, very possibly the greatest mechanical watch ever made. It's what made Audemars Piguet afloat through the quartz crisis and spurned on the concept of integrated bracelets and luxury watches in general, which is very much why we have so many different options when you, you know, from which to choose today, you know, case in point right here. So maybe what you see on your wrist may not be jumbo in any physical aspect, but considering its history and legacy, I think you'll agree that it's not what you can see, it's what's felt and experienced, and that's certainly what makes it worthy of the name Jumbo. Now, if you have any other thoughts on the matter as to why it's called the Jumbo, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Let us know. Be sure to like this video as, you know, it really helps us out. Also, subscribe so you can see the video comparing this Jumbo with the modern Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. All right. Hit that bell notification so you can be notified when it goes live. And as always, if you'd like to purchase this watch or any other watch, even the modern one, we have them in our store, jazztime.com. Links in the description below, and we'll see you in the next one. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it, and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount. So you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazz Time, plus the brand, model, and the details you're interested in, and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.